Ringraziamo il dottor Pugliel della splendida. So, I like, I'd like to thank Dr. Pugliel for his wonderful presentation and now we have our keynote lecture by Professor Giulio Tarro. The title is The importance of pharmaco active pharmacovigilance and vaccine um, registry. Thank you. Innanzitutto grazie. First of all, thank you for the invitation and thank you because almost one year has passed from uh, the 1st of March when we were here in this um, room to discuss problems which uh, represent, um, which are so important for us. I believe it is uh, important to take into account the fact that the uh, 10 things we have to, uh, to know about vaccines represented an overview of uh, vaccination which is uh, important as a prevention of uh, infectious disease but and uh, the administration of any vaccine is always uh, the administration of a drug and so it is inevitable that there can be consequences which are not always expected but this uh, concerns all types of drugs and moreover we have to say that since vaccination represents in Italy at least for some vaccines um, a compulsory vaccination well of course it has to be reassuring um, for um, the content which is given, the way it is given, and if, as we heard today, if there is the possibility for something different from uh, what we find in uh, the information sheet, and which is not, uh, which is not uh, uh, described, well, the authorities must uh, must solve the problem. I believe that it is important to start. Maniera per così dire importante per quel. It is um, something important um, to remember is what Bertrand Russell. Um, said the problem of humanity is that stupid people are always very sure on the contrary intelligent people are always full of doubts well maybe we um, we should have said this sentence at the end of our conference but as we are almost at the end of this morning and many speakers have said their points of view and the validity of the choice of this practice but as uh, the pediatrician said, the pediatrician from India said, we cannot close our eyes following negative effects which have to be known and which have to be related to something. So let's start with this uh, idea from last year. So what happens in the world in terms of infectious disease? So. because uh, mm, what can be prevented through vaccination, of course, cholera. So let's start with cholera. Uh, cholera from Yemen, which affected uh, 1 million 200,000 people last year. And 
the um, mortality rate was equal to three um, out of 1,000. So this is important to know if we want to talk about the safety of what we administer, what it is used in our therapies. We um, are now talking about a confrontation, a comparison with the cholera of 1973 in Naples. Then listeria. Listeria has become something important in South Africa. Listeria is present also here, but uh, we find some differences which are related to what this organism can can um, can cause it can cause meningitis septicemia um, so there have been 1000 cases a mortality rate of 20 percent luckily a good diagnosis make it possible to use um, Beta-lactamic antibiotics, and uh, so it is a disease which can be controlled if uh, um, if diagnosis is done um, early. Um, then we have Ebola, which uh, affected North African countries, and um, in this case we are referring to the Republic of Congo. So 60% of mortality rate. We must never forget that three years ago, those deaths allowed us to develop a vaccine which, is, uh, which can already be used. And thanks to, thanks to Canada, so Ebola so was uh, um, so was um, prevented through the vaccine but of course we have to prevent um, this disease in Africa sub-saharan countries we always hear that um, there are still there's still 1 million deaths in um, that part of Africa and so for this reason these deaths must be avoided. But of course, we have to be pragmatic and we have to understand what one million deaths uh, mean because of the lack of um, drugs. So 357 deaths last year, um, last year in Congo. And now measles measles european measles european measles today is considered at european level an explosion of uh, epidemic possibilities 10530 cases are reported all over europe with 33 deaths so 3 out of 1000 1, so it is important because our country So last um, year, uh, last year we had to show the importance of uh, vaccination and measles. And so, if now there is uh, immunity established by law, mm, um, if um, there are countries such as Japan and the USA uh, that say that in our country there is this um, epidemic. It is a positive aspect, and then hepatitis A. So last year there were 10,582 cases, but um, there are people who um, get sick, but um, also. Uh, well, in several countries. So there are some uh, uh, decades which are characterized by specific um, vaccines. There has been a program of action for a global 
immunization um, organized by the World, Age, uh, the World Health Organization. So there is also a, a working group and this represents um, the strategy of the WHO. Of course, we have to um, say some important aspects. For, for, uh, first of all, uh, the um, HIV AIDS vaccine, as you have heard from the first speaker when he said that once identified the virus in 1985, a couple of years uh, were enough in order to um, to have this, but this was not true because um, the diagnos diagnostic method has been fundamental, and for the first time, it was possible to have the three drugs, and so because this is uh, a mortal disease. And we talk about prevention with uh, the day after P, but um, um, on the 3rd of March, 1993, on The Nature, there was an editorial um, and um, uh, saying that it was difficult to find uh, a vaccine for a virus which is um, transmitted from one cell to the other. And the uh, International Association for Vaccine and uh, AIDS has decided to have an isolated strain of this vaccine in um, California and um, as uh, the epidemic um, strategy, Thailand was used. Of course, we are in uh, the season of flu, and so after one century from the Spanish influenza, uh, during the First World War, uh, while it was related to a flu virus, it had the same genetic features, and it is the same virus which circulated um, 10 years ago. The last serious epidemic took place in 2009, the pig's disease in Mexico. Well, we suppose that uh, we can have a universal vaccine without knowing um, the genes of uh, the virus. And uh, it is uh, and then we have a vaccine for malaria, which seems a vaccine that we all have at our disposal and has potential possibilities and new tuberculosis vaccines. Uh, but there is uh, the problem concerning uh, the resistance of the bacteria. And then we can say that there is already a phase three as uh, the pediatrician um, has said. Uh, so the dengue, fever, CMV, So if you recall, this virus was uh, given in the three liters of transfusions uh, to uh, St. John Paul II after several attempts. And uh, the possibility to have, to finally have a vaccine for the RSV. So, in Naples, for example, we realized that there was an epidemic in um, children who were at the university pediatric um, clinic, and so there were uh, people were isolated several times 
from children hospitalized in Santo Bono University, um, so there was an isolation on the cells, contrary to what they used to do at the university and the higher institute of health, where they had always achieved negative results because this is a virus which uh, um, cannot stand the cold uh, weather. And uh, so it is important to have these intuitions in order to have the demonstration. And uh, so let's see what happens. What happened in uh, the last 10 years dedicated to vaccines? There are at least um, additional 20 million children who were vaccinated. There is the possibility to demonstrate in 123 countries the possibility to have the three doses for the DTP3 vaccine, vaccine so 90% coverage. And uh, so another important uh, percentage, 72% in um, Africa. Since 2010, we have to take into account that in Africa there is uh, a growing, a growth in uh, the population, a rapid growth of the population. And if we use uh, this data from the strategic group, we know that there are 19.9 million children who are not protected by the DPT-3. And this becomes um, an important goal that we still have to achieve. 60% of these children live in just 10 countries. A third of them live in Nigeria where the DPT-3 coverage is only equal to 42%. So now let's see data on measles vaccine in, um, over the last seven years. And so the possibility to say that the coverage is around 85%, but there are some discrepancies, especially as for the possibility to have from 67% in 2017, um, we added 50 cases per million in 2010 to 19 in 2016, but not 25% in 2017. So this is uh, important to know that in, in um, different regions there were some uh, epidemic outbreaks of measles and these concerns America where this didn't exist anymore. There were um, measles-free states And so the problem, there is a big problem concerning the economic and social organization. So we are in a situation of repeated epidemics. And then we have DPT, as you can see, after 24 years without the disease, 1,600 cases, suspected cases of diphtheria were recorded between 2016 and 2018 in Venezuela. So there were two other major diphtheria outbreaks um, in um, the refugees who were forced to uh, to leave Bangladesh, Rohingya, and so 
together with cholera in Yemen, there was also uh, diphtheria in um, the last two years. And now let's see what the doubt. Concerning not the 159 countries, because only seven countries in the world have no problems, but, um, well, Italy has become an international example for vaccination, compulsory um, vaccination for measles, tetanus, and polio, as uh, so there were fake news also in Russia, on Twitter. So now let's see these uh, vaccines, which were analyzed, um, um, as Loretta Bolgan was uh, saying, these are vaccines, the components of which have a polysaccharidic basis and uh, dry subunits, microbiological subunits, and uh, inactivated bacteria toxins. And then there are the um, live vaccines, which are mitigated, such as polio. And then we have recombinant vaccines. So they are modified um, antigens which are inactivated and so they can be used now let's see the analysis which is uh, given by the u.s advisory committee on immunization practices so let's see the vaccination in adults, so 10 mandatory uh, vaccines between one and two years of age. So anti-diphtheria vaccination, uh, so we say just a few words on each one of these vaccines because as um, President Dan was uh, mentioning, you will receive a booklet. So the threat of diphtheria doesn't represent a significant risk because it, it, it can be uh, tackled with antitoxin and antibiotics, which ensure a, um, a good outcome. So we can make a distinction between vaccine prevention and a different way of, um, tackle, of uh, tackling the disease. And uh, let's see. Let's see the obligation that was established in Italy. So um, the disease uh, was uh, um, very widespread in uh, southern Italy, especially in Campania and Apulia. So there was obligation for a vaccine on hepatitis B, which has to be administered at birth and after 12 years. So Italy, in this case, was a leader in terms of uh, this health policy. And uh, today, all people um, below 40 years of age are vaccinated and so protected from hepatitis B, but also some um, liver, liver cancers. And this is a very important correlation. So now let's uh, see the um, vaccine against um, Hemophilus influenza type B. This uh, vaccine was uh, um, developed uh, by Karolinska Institute. It is an important vaccine for several aspects. Today, probably, it is less important. As you can see in the slide, there were several possibilities. Um, So several cases uh, and vaccines, uh, um, but uh, the cases due to the um, serotype B, but there have been 10 cases uh, with uh, 10 children, vaccinated children against uh, um, age influenza. 
and um, so there was a failure in the vaccine and so we recommended for adults only for immunocompromised adults and so there is the possibility to have an increased risk of invasive HIV disease in adults. Some more um, words on uh, measles. So we can say that the effect of anti-measles vaccine is shorter than the natural uh, disease. And so as uh, children are vaccinated, of course, uh, the age um, for a relapse is um, postponed. And we have to say that in adults, measles is more dangerous, especially we have to recall that the natural disease uh, can cause pneumonia, encephalitis, etc. And so if, and so we must always know whether the risk want to be, uh, the risk has to be mitigated or not than a vaccine um, for uh, mumps. So in Italy, there is uh, uh, higher knowledge. And so we hope that this can be also included in our scientific knowledge. Uh, in, um, so we hope that we can make a step forward and do something else. Um, so as for this uh, vaccine, uh, it is um, very important because especially in adolescents, because it can cause meningitis, but it um, can cause orchitis. And so it is um, very important for children and so there are uh, side effects and so it can cause side effects so it is important to consider these side effects then we have vaccination against um, pertussis it is uh, associated to a bacterium and natural immunity towards the disease should um, um, work on the immunoglobulin um, A, Re requires the defense of immunoglobulin A. Then polio, we have to recall Uh, the engagement um, in the United States uh, after the World War, President Roosevelt uh, suffered from the disease. So a strong uh, a social importance was given to the disease. A word importance to a disease that we cannot forget. We cannot uh, just say that the disease was solved thanks to hygiene and health uh, um, changes. So the vaccine was treated with formalin, so there was a first approach as for the reduction in uh, um, children's cases, carbon serving. One is um, competition, and it was uh, the best one even if uh, in a few cases uh, in uh, immuno, uh, especially in children, uh, there can be paralysis caused by vaccine. This becomes a very important aspect. There was this possibility. Um, now this disease is present all in Afghanistan, Nigeria, but there were cases also in Syria because of the war. And we must uh, know that, and, and the studies are focusing on uh, this aspect, are 
trying to um, to to make poliovirus as um, the smallpox virus. So the serum cases uh, are due to a reactivation of the vaccine virus. So this is a type of knowledge that we have to know, that we have to spread, and uh, thanks to um, the analysis um, of vaccines in labs, this becomes very important. And finally, we we'll briefly conclude with Rubello about the doubts uh, refer to the fact that uh, the antibodies play a role, especially for fertile women. We know uh, that we have to avoid the famous side effects by immunizing only them. So this goes not only for Rubella, but also eventually for the other pathologies, anti-tetanic vaccination. Uh, it's important for this coverage to uh, eliminate any doubts uh, if to do, whether to do it at birth, so we do not longer have the problem of neonatal infections. And so then it becomes uh, aspect that needs further analyzed uh, studies uh, with the presence of the serum in uh, chemist shops and the possibility to have a single dose, so to say, going back to what I said at the beginning. So the manufacturer, Institute of Florence, um, investing millions of euro with a project that was uh, finally stopped. Um, for chicken pox, we can have the same systems, again, the possibility to monitor antibodies and to vaccinate only women before pregnancy, avoiding uh, side effects. So in perspective, there is a positive implication that still has to be validated that the dose, which is uh, almost new could be a preventive measure not only for uh, chicken pox but rather the uh, herpes zosters in adults so this is part of the herpes family and this, this virus is hidden in the ganglia so we have seen the analysis by the American Institute for the uh, papilloma virus, PV. So it was already demonstrated that it's uh, full of impurities, but it's important to know, and today this is the, you know, the offsetting all the different elements. It's very important. The Australian colleagues will in this field, of course, have been the um, pacemakers for rubella and immunology at large, with Barnett more specifically, and their studies on uh, flu, the immunological changes in the world population. So they are well equipped to tell us if the HPV vaccine compared with the Japan results can work with the oncogenic strains that are responsible for the second uh, cause of uh, the uterus uh, cancer in women as a different approach. It's a mimetic particle. Here you can see this particle, which mimes hides the normal virus. After the statement party by the FDA of the 8th June 
2006, which was uh, liberalizing the, the vaccine, there was a possibility to instead to obtain a vaccine that would finally that is Gardasil 9 could have uh, um, seven oncogenic strains and two non-oncogenic strains which are important today. So these are the that causes the uh, uterus neck cancer but also other world genital cancers and uh, other tumors of the uterus. So pneumococcus for immune suppressed adults aged more than 65. It's very important to have the different doses and the possibility to be vaccinated is very important to avoid antibiotic resistance as we said. Hepatitis A, we have seen the uh, success that was uh, reported in the US uh, in cases of epidemics and also the possibility to use this vaccine also quite safety. Of course, this is not a fatal disease. And then here we, we also uh, we always resort to this suggested vaccine for the meningococcus with two different aspects. The American schools suggests type B vaccine from nine years on. Instead, we do that already at the first two years of age. The same goes for the routine for the Men, meningococcus vaccine, the A type that is widely spread in Italy, but we are by now a globalized country with many migrants, so there can be different um, strains. And finally, just a few words. As I said at the beginning, the swine disease, this flu, which can hit, can still hit our population. I want to show you some personal data which were published on the Journal of Physiology demonstrating that then, at that time, there was a peculiar composition of the Italian regional framework, and somehow we explained the situation also as regards the mortality rate again Campania was ranking among the first as first so this 27 deaths in Campania compared to the other regions were not associated to uh, problems of the health system the problem was that you patients entered the Cotugno hospital, which is the main hospital from other Italian regions as well. So this is why it has reached that high figure. Of course, these are data uh, provided by the I Institute for Health, which regard the age of incidents. So we still need to ponder on what is happening right now in, in China, what is circulating in China. We still have this virus coming from the birds, water birds. And there is another virus, age seven and nine, that can still cause deaths through the transmission from the animal to man and from man to man. So when we go to China, we, we, it's important to uh, measure the, the temperature before going through the passport gate. So who is afraid of the flu? It's basically a battle of mindset we have to go on 
to think at all the vaccines that are produced every year. And here you can see the composition, the same vaccine that is used has been used for two or three years now. We do not longer talk about trivalent and we have introduced a further B strain for this tetravalent, which is suggested for small children and elderly over 65. And of course, all these persons might have different problems, like pregnant women, elderly, persons affected by cardiovascular diseases or liver and kidney problems. So, Scream of Munch uh, is the final slide.